Happy Friday. Welcome back to Drinking by My Shelf. My name is Emma. I'm going to sit here and read the first chapters of all of these books, and you are going to sit here and watch me. The reason that I am doing this is because if you've been following along with Balancing the Books, you will see that I've kind of fallen off the edge of a cliff with it. I've been doing really, really well, and now suddenly I just keep buying books and not reading any books and completely giving up on balancing them, so my TBR has grown. And we're coming up to the end of another month. In fact, by the time you see this, it will already be February. But for me, I still have a little bit of time left to salvage the situation so that I don't fail at balancing the books for the third month running. I think I need to clear some books from my TBR. And the best way to do that, read the first chapters, decide if I like them or not. It is also becoming increasingly important that I do this because there are just more and more books coming into my life that I want to read, especially now that I have downloaded the app Friendspire, who are sponsoring this video. So what is Friendspire? Friendspire is basically this app that is Goodreads crossed with IMDb, but better because it's all targeted recommendations for you and it's also got podcasts in there as well. The app is growing really, really fast as well, so more and more of my friends are getting onto it, which makes it just like fantastic for not only saving your recommendations, but also sharing them with friends, seeing what other people are reading, getting inspired by them. I believe that's why it's called Friendspire. So if we start on the book section, you can see here there are recommendations that have been picked for me based on the books that I saved and the books that I rated. They're kind of learning my taste and the more and more they use it, the more accurate these recommendations will get. As well as saving books that I liked, I also told them my favourite genres. So these books that were picked for me are in a range of my favourite genres. And you can get more specific and say, I want to read some mystery books. So say I decide that I want to read 56 Days here. I can save it and I'll never forget to read it. And what else is cool, so if we go back to the homepage here, if we look at the books that are picked for me, um, ooh, The Maid, I really want to read that. So you go in here, so I can see the Goodreads rating and how many ratings it's got over there. I can see the rating here on Friendspire. I can also get all of this information about it and here, go down to similar books and get more recommendations based on that one. So I can basically like go down a rabbit hole of book recommendations. So if we now have a look at my saved, you can see the book that I just saved is in there, as well as a bunch that I saved earlier. You can also save lists. So I found this list that looked really interesting of 30 books, and I saved that. You can also make your own list. If you go to my profile, I've started making some lists here of authors to try again, books everyone's talking about. You can use that however you want, really. And if you wanted to follow me on Friendspire, this is where you'd see everything that I've recommended. So you can see all my ratings. I've rated a lot of things really highly. And that's just the book section. So you can see if we go back to home, I've also started building my podcast recommendations here. And next I'm gonna fill out movies and TV shows. So I will never be lost for what entertainment to consume next. So that is Friendspire. Thank you so much to Friendspire for sponsoring this video. Once I've cleared out my TBR, I'll be ready to buy all the new books that I get recommended on Friendspire. And if you click the link in the description box below, you can go through and download the app yourself and get started. But for now, I need to actually clear space on my TBR shelf. So I am going to make myself a cup of tea and then come back and read the first chapters of these... How many books have I got here? Eight books. This is a delightful way to spend my morning reading the first chapters of eight different books. I've got the three here that I hauled from Book of the Month, because I don't know that much about them, so I thought it'd be fun to give them a try. I've got some books that I've just had on my TBR for a while, so I thought I might as well check in, see if I actually still want to read them. Some I've brought home from work. This is one that my sister lent me. She was loving it, could not stop talking about it, and then suddenly DNF'd it. So I'm intrigued. So that's my eight selection. Let's get my tea and come back. So going through these books in no particular order, the first one I've got here is Mother for Dinner. So this is one that I brought home from work. It's just such a bizarre concept that I couldn't resist it. It's a dark comedy about a family of cannibals and our main character whose mother is like very into their family's tradition of being cannibals and so her last dying wish is for her children to eat her. And they're like, ew, we don't want to do that. But it's all about getting back in touch with their identity. So it sounds great from that premise, really really weird, but it could be one of those books that just doesn't actually work for me. I quite often pick up books that I love the idea of because they're so weird and I start reading it and I'm like, oh I see, this is really weird and I can't get into it. So let's see what happens in chapter one. Line number one, mothers taste awful. Okay, I'm in. I'm into this. It, it is weird. It is going to be weird. I am intrigued to see what the discussion about identity, where that's going to go. I don't know how detailed it's going to get about 
the process of eating his mother. <laughs> I'm hoping not very. But it's funny, I've laughed a few times at this. I'm keeping it. Okay, next on the list, another one I brought home from the office. This is very different. This one sounds very cute. The Cat Who Saved Books. So it's an adult book. It's a book for adults, but it is about a talking cat. So is it going to be like too cutesy for me or am I going to love it? It is about the power of books and like a mission to save books. Only one way to find out. I got my head out this sunroof. I'm blasting my favorite tunes. I only got one thing on my mind. You got me stuck on Okay, so that was just the prologue. Haven't met the talking cat yet, so don't really have a idea of what the tone of that is going to be. I do like the style of this so far. So I've read quite a lot of books translated from Japanese and I've loved most of them to be honest. Obviously I can't generalise about all Japanese books but I have loved a lot of them. There's something about, I don't know if it's the process of translating from Japanese to English but they're written in this very like matter-of-fact way that I find it's very easy to read and just feels a little bit magical even when it's not actually magical. So I feel like a talking cat in this isn't going to be totally out of the blue. I'm still unsure on this one if this is going to be my kind of thing or not, but I'm putting it on the probably keep pile. Okay, the Dud Avocado. So this is one that my sister gave me. So it's written in the 50s, um, but she said it was like this hilarious, she said it reminded her of like the Angus Thongs series, but set in the 50s. And she was loving it and then she just suddenly got bored. <laughs> so just because I like the first chapter of this doesn't mean that I will actually continue to like it because maybe I'll just get bored like she did. But I think I have a slightly better attention span when it comes to reading than Sophie does. So let's see. I've just flipped ahead to see that chapter one is actually really long. Um, so I'll just keep reading until I feel like I've got the gist. You got me stuck on the side of you. You're making me feel brand new. I'm getting the gist. I can see that she's completely chaotic, this main character, and I think I will have fun with her. Moving on, another one from work, Her House. This one is like a gothic story. It's like a modern witch story. It's set in a remote estate in Scotland. A woman mysteriously arrives, and then hysteria sets in in the community. Pretty eyes in your head, you know it. You got me dancing. Ooh, okay, so that was just the like prologue was not even two pages long, but it is creepy. So that first bit we just see basically a woman like standing in the middle of a classroom as all these girls like collapse around her and there's this screaming and everyone comes running. Is our main character a witch? This is kind of giving me, that little scene gave me the Crucible vibes. I was obsessed with the Crucible. We studied it at school and I loved it. And then we did it for our drama GCSE and it was so fun. There is something about mass hysteria <laughs> the like phenomenon of mass hysteria that's so interesting because there are these real stories of things like this happening and i want to know what's going on in this book yeah this is definitely a keeper so far i'm not doing well at reducing my tbr at all moving on to circus of wonders this is one that i've had on my tbr for ages and i keep not picking it up so i'm just gonna pick it up now and see if i'm interested at all so this is by Elizabeth McNeil. I really liked her first book, The Doll Factory. This one I picked up because I kind of liked the idea of it being set in a circus. But then the more I think about it, am I interested in it being set in a circus? I'm not sure. It's historical fiction and I am very, very picky about historical fiction. I think I maybe like the idea of circus books more than I actually like circus books. I didn't like The Night Circus. Have I read any other circusy ones? No, that's my only example. That is my full scientific research that I've done. So might as well try another one and see if there's a pattern. No, oh, I have another one. Um, I read The Hourglass Factory. That also was set at a circus. I quite liked that one. Didn't love it. So this is actually take three. You are exactly what I want. Kinda cool and kinda not. Wanna give myself to you. So that was only chapter one. It wasn't much of a try. It didn't pull me in the same way that everything I've read so far has interested in me more than this first chapter. I do really like Elizabeth McNeil's writing. I like that it's dark and quite like physical, um, but I think maybe I'm just not interested in the circus setting. Her last one was in London and had this creepy collector guy and I found that more compelling than I think I will find the circus setting. I'm gonna put this one on the pile of books that I can get rid of if I need to in balancing the books. 
and by if I need to. I know I will need to. Okay, three to go. I've got my three book of the month picks here. So I was intrigued by The Family, which is about two daughters from two families. Already, I'm not sure if I actually do want to read this one. But I'm here now, so I might as well start the first chapter. Yeah, we're driving down the freeway at night. I don't think I'm interested. That was a very short little prologue I just read, but I don't think I'm interested. I found the writing in that first chapter a little bit... Not pretentious, that's harsh, but like... A little bit high drama. Ice gripping your torso with its hands, so a gun unfired holds its power. It's just, it's trying quite hard. That one is also going on my unhaul pile. We're finally making some progress. This one I think looks really nice. A Little Hope by Ethan Joella. It says it's a life affirming novel. It's over the course of a year in an idyllic Connecticut town. Chapter one is called Rain Day. I only got one thing in the back of my mind. I'm feeling like this might be my time to shine with you, with you, with you. I got my head. Okay, so. Having said that I was excited about this one, I found that first chapter really boring. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I thought I was gonna love this, but I found that really boring. Well, that makes it easier at least. That one's for the pile. Which means I just have one book left, A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham. This is the final book of the month one. This one is a thriller. And you know I do love a thriller. It's about a girl who, when she was 12, Six teenage girls went missing in her town, but the twist, her own father ended up confessing to the crimes. So we're now 20 years later, and she is troubled. This sounds fun. I got my head out this sunroof, I'm blasting our favorite tunes, I only got one thing on my mind, you got me... Yeah, that first chapter didn't give me much, but you know what? I'm gonna keep this one. I think this is gonna be fun, easy to read. I'll keep this for next time I'm in a reading slump. So in the end, that's three out of eight that have been cleared off my shelf. That's pretty good. Ready for three new recommendations from Friendswire. So thanks again to Friendswire for sponsoring this video. Once again, do click the link in my description box. Go and check out the app and have a browse and let me know if you find any really good recommendations from there. And I will see you next time. I'm blasting